welcome everybody and tell you a little bit of secret i'm a little bit psychic yes if i actually touch an object and if i focus hard enough i can actually see into its future so to make you guys believe me i have an apple pie here so let's give this a try huh Mmm. Let's eat you up. Ow. Mmm. 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 Ah. Oh. Well, I'm definitely gonna murder this pie later. Never had a chance. And those psychic powers are actually stuff that helps our characters out in the movie I'll be talking about, Netflix Nights number 17, Solace. And before I do, let's see what the good folks over at Netflix have for a synopsis for us today, shall we? Dr. John Clancy has retired, but his unique psychic abilities compel his friend from the FBI to ask for Clancy's help one last time to track down a serial killer with a ghastly technique and prophetic powers of his own. Rated R and from 2016. And this is an interesting film to talk about because this film originally was supposed to be a sequel to Seven. And the idea that Morgan Freeman's character would gain psychic powers and there would be a psychic killer and he would have to track it down and honestly I've looked into this and it's really bizarre I don't know how they even came up with the concept of Morgan Freeman being psychic I don't understand how he got the psychic powers the film was supposed to be called eight and David Fincher ended up looking at the script he hated it he disapproved it and this movie or this script i should say sort of went in limbo for years it got changed around constantly and it you know morphed into different concepts and ideas and we finally have the movie that we have now and you know i actually enjoy this movie this movie got bombed at the box office. It didn't do well at all. People hated it. And I was ready to go into it. Okay, like everyone else doesn't like it. I guess I'm not going to like it either. But that's not always the case. And this is one of those exceptions. And right off the bat, I like the concept of this killer who can see these multiple ideas and these multiple versions of what's going to happen and he's psychic so he knows exactly what's going to happen he knows that the FBI is going to come at a this certain point he knows that they're going to find this object at this point he knows that they're going to track him down at this location he knows all this stuff and having a psychic kind of killer I think is kind of cool I actually really do and I like the idea that the FBI really doesn't know how to handle this case. They're really out of their depth. And they bring in this other psychic who is older and somebody who has just been beaten down by life and who doesn't really want to help out but kind of gets dragged into this. I actually really like all that stuff. I think it's pretty solid of a base of a story. Like I said, I don't think it would work as a seven sequel, but just a standalone movie on its own, I think it's fine. And I think the acting here is great. You have Anthony Hopkins, you have Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you have Abby Cornish, and you have Colin Farrell. And all of them do well. Jeffrey Dean Morgan in this movie plays sort of the senior FBI agent who is taking on the case. And I tell you, he has a lot of charisma in this movie. I almost sort of see him as Negan in this role. I'm kind of like, wow, the charisma he has here, he brings to the Negan role, and I'm like, 
I wonder if the people from The Walking Dead sort of saw this movie and was like, okay, he has charisma. He can play this character. He does. He's a really good job in this movie. Abby Cornish plays the younger FBI agent, and she's very stoic and serious. She's sort of maybe a little bit too serious. Maybe she needed to be sort of a little bit looser of a character, but I think they wanted her to play sort of the uptight, sort of, you know, newbie FBI person. And, you know, she does a decent job in it. Uh, Anthony Hopkins plays the older, sort of beaten down by life psychic who helps the FBI out. And, you know, he's good in this role. He's sort of playing it very sort of matter-of-fact, I guess, right? He's sort of playing it like, you know, I don't care kind of a role. I shouldn't say that because he does care, but I think he plays it sort of like, well, yeah, you know, you're, we're just going to do this and we're just going to do that and, you know, whatever, and this is what the result's going to be. Maybe he's a little bit pompous. Maybe, just a tiny bit. And... You know, Anthony Hopkins, he's a really great actor. You know, look, he'll always be known for Hannibal Lecter, and he has a little bit of his Hannibal Lecter mannerisms in this role. He sort of plays it like, I'm a know-it-all, but I don't like being a know-it-all because it's frustrating. And I can imagine somebody like him who has these sort of psychic powers, who can touch an object or a person and can instantly, like, know their past and their possible future, it must be very, it must be a burden on a guy like that. And he plays that role of somebody being that type of guy. And also he's had tragedy in his own life that has caused him to be very jaded as well. But he does a really good job at this. Also, Colin Farrell is in this movie as well. And he plays sort of the killer, the villain, if you want to call him that. But this guy actually has a purpose of what he's doing. He's, yes, he is a killer. I'm not going to sit here and say he's not a killer. But he actually has an idea and a thought about it. He's like, I'm doing this as a mercy killing. I'm doing this because I see it as these people are going to suffer. And I'm actually doing them a favor. And he's planned this all out to a T. He's planned everything out to a T in how... He's going to kill these people, who he's picking. Also, he even planned everything down to meeting up with the Anthony Hopkins character and planning sort of the finale of this piece, which is actually pretty interesting. You know, and also I really got to give a lot of props to the movie itself because it has a lot of great imagery in it, sort of like imagery of sort of the psychic ideas of the imagery sort of blood running down somebody's face or sort of a a whole like field of flowers I mean or like a whole or a little girl going down a staircase with like balloons all around her I mean sort of really cool imagery that I think is really is really kind of cool to watch it engages you I will say this, not a lot of the characters we really got to know in depth, and I think that's a big problem. We didn't get to know Jeffrey D. Morgan's character in depth enough, certainly not Abby Cornish's character, not even Colin Farrell. I would have liked everybody to be stretched a little bit more in their depth. I would have liked to have seen more of a backstory of Colin Farrell, why he's kind of doing what he's doing just a little bit. I wanted to care about these characters a little bit more. I cared about Anthony Hopkins' character. They really developed him really well. But other people, not so much. And also, you know, I think... I think this movie sort of suffers from... I think trying to mimic other movies. I think definitely this movie tries to mimic Seven a lot. I think you can definitely tell that while watching the movie. And a lot of other sort of procedural stuff. I wish it would have been a little bit more original. I wish it would have tried to maybe branch out and do its own thing a little bit. And I know that's hard to do. There's so many movies out there and there's so many things that you can easily copy. 
I just wish it maybe went down a different road just a little bit, but I think it's still actually a really solid movie. And it's one of those little small thrillers that I actually really enjoy. I wasn't expecting much from this. Look, I knew it bombed at the box office. I knew that people didn't care for the movie. And so I went in with sort of expectations of like, this is probably not going to be good. And I actually really enjoyed it a lot. Look, this is not as good as Seven. It's not as good as a lot of these thrillers that you may have seen. But I think it's in that sort of second tier of thrillers that I think is really good. And I think you're really going to have a good time with it. I, I certainly did. I certainly had a really solid time with it. And you could really tell that the actors were really sort of loving what they were doing. In sort of the special features I watched, there was sort of a behind the scenes making of where you could sort of tell that Anthony Hopkins and Colin Farrell was really loving what they were doing. They were coming up with ideas and they were sort of, you know, improvising a certain amount and you could tell that they were really engaged in the story. And I think that helps it a lot because sometimes, look, I've seen actors who are totally disengaged in a role. These characters, these actors are engaged in this role fully. So I would say, you know what, guys, give it a chance. Absolutely give it a chance. And if you like it, you know, I would try to seek out more of these type of thrillers. I mean, I can't think of any that come off the top of my head, but... This is one that I really do enjoy. So I definitely think you guys should give it a chance. So yes, I do recommend it. All right, guys, that will do it. Netflix Nice, number 17, Solace, is in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely give it a like. And in the comment section below, let me know if you guys have seen Solace, if you enjoy it, or what other thrillers would you recommend to me that maybe I haven't seen that you'd like me to watch. Let me know. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hope you enjoy the content here and hope you enjoy the content I've been doing. If you have, definitely subscribe and you'll get more of it. Also, I am on Twitter and Facebook, FilmFan108, so you can connect with me there as well. All right, guys, I will see you later. Take care, guys. Bye.